iteratively adapting avatars using task integrated optimization. This work is done by myself, Jess McIntosh, and my colleagues, Hubert Liak, Andrea Stefan, Joanna Bergstrom, and Casper Hornback. So avatars represent the user in virtual reality. They have form, which usually mimics the outline of a human body. The user embodies the avatar and they can control it. But there are many ways in which we can adapt an avatar. And by adaptation, I mean changing the shape of the avatar in some way, such as by scaling it or stretching the arms, as shown in these two examples. There are many cases where adaptations can be beneficial, such as to walk faster or to increase your reaching distance, again investigated in these two works. But for a given adaptation, how do we best choose the right amount of adaptation or the right parameters for the adaptation? that best fit a certain task or environment. To this end, we propose iterative task integrated optimization, a generic approach to finding the best adaptation for a particular task or environment. And this is how it works. So we first start with a baseline avatar and we let the user perform a task with the avatar. We then assess its fitness, which is a function that can be comprised of performance or other measures and we feed this fitness data into an optimization algorithm, which then adapts the avatar, which the user then tests again in the same task. And this cycle of adaptation and task assessment continues until we reach a finishing criteria and an avatar is selected. So let's go through an example. So there are many instances where um, in past work, the forearm of the avatar is adapted. But in past work, the kind of length is chosen either arbitrarily or perhaps a few lengths have been tried. Um, so naturally, we studied our approach with this. A baseline avatar in this case is simply an avatar that matches the user's body. As a task, we had a spiral of targets and the user would have to reach and tap the highlighted target, which sometimes required walking. For performance measures, we used throughput and body movement. We then calculated the fitness as a function of these. We used an algorithm similar to gradient descent to adapt the avatar based on the fitness delta. Then after 30 iterations, we selected the avatar with the highest fitness as the optimal. In our study, we compared the baseline avatar to the optimal avatar. And the results showed that the overall performance favored the optimal avatar. We also had NASA TLX questionnaires, which showed that the mental and physical demand were also lower in the optimal avatar. Looking closely at the performance, we could see that the distances moved by each body part was overall lower for the optimal avatar. And the task time and throughput were both significantly improved We wondered if this approach could be generalized. So we took a different task and adaptation and also optimization algorithm. Here, the task is similar, but with a different layout. The adaptation is instead finger scale and we used a Bayesian optimizer. Here you can see an example of a baseline hand versus an optimized version with very long fingers. And although it might look quite strange, they are useful since they allow the user to tap the targets with minimal hand movement. Similar to the first study, the optimized finger scale performs significantly better than the baseline. In future work, we think that the approach could be extended to include other measures in the fitness function, such as ownership, presence, or other experience measures. And body morphology could also be a parameter for adaptation, such as the number of arms or fingers. Thank you for listening. I'm happy to take any questions you might have.